For everyone that's joined, we're just going to give it a couple more minutes just to give people time to get in and then we'll get started. Okay, I'm going to start now. So welcome everyone to the next Life Sciences Partnership webinar. Today we are joined by the Motion Monitor. And as always, this will be recorded and we are live streaming on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Vicon. Uh, this webinar will be shared across our social media channels afterwards. And for those of you registered, will get the email so you can watch the recording. So before we get started, I just have a quick update from Vicon. I'm pleased to announce Dr. Felix Choi has joined the life science product management team for the Americas region. So Felix graduated from McMaster University with a degree in mechanical engineering before earning his PhD from Loughborough University in the UK. He has been at Vicon for almost nine years and most of you will recognize him as the voice behind numerous training videos on our Vicon YouTube channel. Felix will be presenting on behalf of ICON today, and I'll be monitoring the questions we receive during the session. So if you do have any questions, please um, ask them during the session and we'll be monitoring throughout. So over to you, Felix. Thanks for the kind introduction, Kim. Uh, as much as I'd like to make this uh, about me, uh, the real reason that we're here is to talk about the motion monitor and how they can enhance our ICON experience with real-time capabilities. Today, we are joined by Mona Buta, who is currently the president of Innovative Sports Training and has been with the company for 20 years. We are also joined by Meredith Evans, who is the vice president of market and client development. She's been with the company for 12 years. Innovative Sports Training officially partnered with Vicon in 2008, though I'm told there have been ties actually since the early 2000s. Innovative Sports Training's The Motion Monitor software uses streamed marker data from Nexus, along with other supported technologies like force plates, EMG, eye trackers, EEG, and virtual reality to create both offline and real-time custom applications. Their turnkey approach ensures that you not only get the high quality data that comes from a Vicon system, but you get a high quality solution that helps address your specific application. This includes expansive real-time capabilities to be used in biofeedback applications in the fields of sports performance or rehabilitation. Having been with Vicon support since 2012, I, along with other members of the support team, have worked with their support team at Innovative Sports Training closely. Not only are they great people, but I've always found them to stay informed on in all things Vicon and make sure that they are leveraging our new features to provide the best possible product for our mutual customers. And with that, I'll hand it over to Mona so she can show you some of the great things happening with the Motion Monitor. Great, thank you, Felix. Um, we wanna thank Vicon for hosting this webinar and giving us this opportunity to present the Motion Monitor. And just wanna thank you all for joining us and we hope we can show you something that could be useful for your research and your motion analysis needs. So who we are, our company is Innovative Sports Training. Um, we've been around since 1994 and we are based in Chicago. So please do visit us if you're ever in town. And what we are, we are the developers of the Motion Monitor software. It's a real-time biomechanics software for acquisition, visualization and analysis. We are also integrators of various biomechanics related technologies such as kinematics, EMG, force plates, instrumented treadmills, EEG, and eye trackers. We're also the providers of customized turnkey solutions 
including hardware and software. So what we do, we consult, we discuss the research needs and requirements of our clients and better understand their situations with regards to things like lab environment, users, budgets, short-term and long-term goals. And this helps us better assist with suggesting what technologies would be optimal for their research and lab. And after those discussions, we can propose a customized solution, which includes hardware and software. We do also provide software only for those with existing hardware. And after delivery of those systems, we provide training and then follow up technical and application support to ensure that you're using both the hardware and the motion monitor software optimally. And we like to stay close to our clients and their research. And as our clients' research and needs evolve, they can always continue to expand their motion monitor system and add additional uh, supported technologies and software modules as well. So these are the peripheral systems which are supported in the motion monitor and can be synchronously uh, collected with the Vicon marker data. Um, I'm sure many of these technologies are familiar to many of you. I think now we'll take a moment to have our first poll to learn a little bit more about you all and have you all participate. Do I continue? <laughs> All right, is the poll done? <laughs> uh -huh. okay. And you can see the results, great. Mona. Yep. Yeah. Okay, great. Looks like a lot of you um, are using some type of kinematic tracking. All right, thank you. Um, and also here's just a list of some of our clients um, and the different application areas for which the motion monitor is used. So in orthopedics, clinical gait analysis, rehabilitation, physical therapy, sports, ergonomics, surgical performance, neuroscience and robotics, and engineering. And just wanted to kind of go over a few of the benefits of real-time data collection with the motion monitor. So it offers a single software platform for data collection, model definition, visualization, and analysis. It offers quality check of data during setup, recording, and immediately upon recording. And you also get subject or patient engagement because you have immediate visualization of the biomechanical model and data. You can also employ real-time biofeedback for providing audio or visual cues to modify behavior and for virtual reality applications. I think we'll actually have our second poll now. All right, glad many of you see the value in it. <laughs> okay, so now um, we're gonna describe some of the features associated with the setup, visualization, and analysis uh, within the motion monitor. And then we'll demonstrate some of these well, through some videos. So for setup um, and co-location, the motion monitor uses various methods for aligning hardware to that of the Vicon system. 
for force plates and instrumented treadmills. A stylus is instrumented with markers and is used to sim simultaneously take a center of pressure reading and a position reading in the Vicon system to align the force plate axes to that of Vicon. And for eye trackers, the collocation, um, I'm sorry about that. The collocation enables eye gaze data to be reported in the reference frame of Vicon as well. And similarly for virtual reality, um, our collocation methods allows the virtual world to be aligned with that of Vicon's. And for hybrid motion capture, whereby Vicon is simultaneously collected with IMUs or electromagnetic trackers, the hardware is aligned so that there's a single common global reference frame. For defining the biomechanical model, the motion monitor supports various methods. You can use standard marker sets or user-defined marker sets. You can also use marker clusters and use a stylus to locate anatomical landmarks for defining joint centers and local segment axes. For visualizations, the motion monitor offers various options for displaying data. For the animation, you can view a skeletal model or a musculoskeletal model. Data can be viewed in standard time series graphs. Data can also be viewed as XY plots and bar graphs. And data can also be displayed as text in an animation for easy viewing, such as a stats display. In addition, real world objects can be tracked and viewed in the animation to analyze interaction between the subject and the object. So some general capabilities, um, the subject setup, recording and analysis workflow is driven by icons. So it's fast and repeatable to operate the system. The analyses can be tied to icons, making it easy to access different analyses, such as from kinematics to joint angles and kinetic data, as well as user-defined data. The data variables are selected from drop-down menus or user-defined formulas using raw or process data. The motion monitor also offers data reduction for normalizing data and performing ensemble averaging of trials across a single subject or group of subjects or patients. Also reports can be automatically generated from the motion monitor. So these reports can be customized to your needs and are operated in Excel. So it's easy to tailor the data and visual display to your organization's brands and needs. And here are a few examples of some reports we've customized for our clients. So now let's take a look at some videos. So first we're gonna show you a few examples of real-time applications. The first one um, kind of will just show you the, the workflow and process of the subject setup, data collection and analysis. So if you keep an eye on the time, I'll show you how quick it is to do a subject setup. So these are predefined marker clusters. So a single cluster is placed for each segment being tracked and the clusters are easily attached using uh, neoprene straps with Velcro. And once these clusters are placed, we're ready to use one of the various methods for defining the model with regard to local coordinate system and joint centers. So joints can be identified with a functional method as you see here, or by digitizing one or more anatomical landmarks and using the centroid or user-defined formula. So now the operator will use a predefined stylus to identify and capture the anatomical landmarks uh, uh, used for the biomechanical model. And she's also using a handheld event marker so that a single person can set up and run data collection independently. 
And as you see, the subject is being set up and digitized, you can view the real-time animation for feedback. So this allows you to view and quality check that the model is how you'd expect it to be um, and represents the, the real-time, the real-world movements. And while viewing in live, you can also look at data as well. So this also provides another form of quality check. So now the recording has started and you can still continue to view the animation and the data while you're recording. Triggers can also be used to control the stop and start of the recording as well. And as soon as the recording is completed, the activity is immediately available for playback. And that's what we're seeing here now. You can view raw, processed, or user-defined data alongside uh, reference video as well. So biofeedback with knee flexion while squatting. So we're about to see an example of our biofeedback module, which allows you to provide real-time audio and visual cues for applications such as for sports performance, gait retraining, and rehab. Audio feedback can be used to encourage emotion with success tones when the target values are reached or provide a negative tone to discourage a movement pattern. During the biofeedback, and the operator can also visualize data in real time to monitor performance. So then after the biofeedback session, the animation and data are immediately available for viewing. Next we'll have virtual reality for gait retraining with Burtek instrument treadmill. So our biofeedback module is what drives the virtual reality capabilities as well. For this system, we partner with Burtek to integrate their instrumented split belt treadmill and their immersive virtual reality dome. Also include our eight Vicon cameras for motion capture and all hardware is integrated with the motion monitor. So the belt speed of the treadmill can be dynamically controlled in the motion monitor by user defined parameters, such as a subject's natural gait speed for self paced walking. And the display of the virtual environment can reflect the speed of the treadmill for a more realistic visual flow and experience. And full body kinematic data is automatically captured and synchronized with the treadmill and VR data. And data is available for playback and analysis immediately after the recording. And you can introduce different environments, targets, and obstacles to measure such things as foot clearance. And these virtual scenes here are created using uh, Unity. So here's another um, example, but for upper extremity with virtual reality. Here there's a suspended rear projection screen, 3D projector, a frame with Vicon cameras, and the motion monitor for data collection and analysis. This example shows a hybrid motion capture whereby the subject's hand and fingers are tracked by electromagnetic sensors, and the remaining body segments are tracked by Vicon cameras and markers. The motion monitor offers a skeletal animation and also musculoskeletal animation for visualization. And you can toggle on and off the animation of individual muscles. In the bottom right, you can see the hand detail animation. The white bones represent the segments which are instrumented and tracked by sensors and the remaining segments are scaled and the movement is interpolated.
So here you'll see the muscle animation turn off when the checkbox is disabled. This is very easy to control. You can also use formulas to change the color of the muscle too. This can be useful for subject engagement to identify points of interest during the movement. An object tracking and animation is also demonstrated here. An object can be either stationary or dynamic, and you can control the definitions for position, orientation, coloring, and lighting. And in this example, the wine glass is stationary and placed in a known location in the measurement volume, and the wine bottle is instrumented with markers and dynamically tracked. So looking here at the activity, we can see the detail hand animation and the full upper body animation with the wine glass and bottle. In the top XY plot, the crosshairs represent the left and right points of the glass rim. And these points were digitized on the real world glass to identify its position in the 3D global reference frame for Vicon. The trace shows the path of the wine spout. Now we'll ask for your participation again for our third poll. All right, great. Now I'm going to hand it off to Meredith and uh, she will show you some of our sports um, applications. Thanks, Mona. Um, so I'm gonna show you some examples of our sports performance and analysis. So our first example is a jump assessment with kinematics. Um, this is an application that's optimized for efficiency. Um, it allows you to quickly and reliably assess the biomechanical and neuromuscular performance of an athlete. You'll see it has an icon-driven interface and ensures a fast and error-free protocols so you can focus on time with the player. You can collect a sequence of counter movement, squat, and drop jumps with immediate playback of the research grade performance analytics. You can see there is a synchronized video. Um, and then up here we have a stats window. So the stats window allows you to select from 50 plus variables or statistics um, to analyze the performance. And then the digital video below is synchronized and allows you to have a frame by frame uh, playback for the evaluation of the subject's biomechanics. Looks like maybe our, our video froze. Oh, there it goes. It just needed a minute. <laughs> um, so this will show you the, the video synchronized. And then on the left, we have our data graphs. Um, and the data graphs allow you to have an intuitive understanding of the speed of force generation. So it's showing you a unique left and right ground reaction force. Here you can see it all synchronized in one playback. Our next example is a kettlebell. Um, so this trial demonstrates object tracking and animation. So you can see this, the kettlebell is scaled and animated along with the biomechanical model on the left. And um, you can see the kettlebell velocity is computed and displayed on the right with the subject kinematics and force data. Next, we have a Y balance test. Um, as you likely know, the Y balance test is part of the functional movement systems screen and it's used to evaluate dynamic balance and symmetry. So you can see the subject scores are displayed in the top left of the animation window. 
Um, and then on the right, you'll see there's the synchronized reference video and then user-defined data that includes the center of pressure in an XY graph and identification of the local maximums for the toe displacement is shown in the time series graph below. Next, we have a baseball pitching example. So here you can see the pitch is visualized with an athlete specific 3D animation. So you see at the top and then beneath it, you'll see that the software is automatically identifying key events. So those include foot contact, maximum external rotation, ball release and maximum internal rotation. The icons provide the ability to quickly view different predefined analyses. And each analysis has interactive graphs and stats windows for visualizing different metrics. So the one that you're seeing displayed right now is angular velocities and joint angles. And those include the peak values. This next one is forces and moments. Those include net and distraction forces during the pitch. And then our last analysis is energetics. So that includes full body, segmental energy, and power. Keeping with baseball, we have a baseball hitting example up next. So this one allows you to see different animation windows. So you can do multiple animation windows so that you can see different perspectives. You'll see the bat speed is displayed in the top right, and then beneath that is the um, kinematics. We have a golf example. It's actually what the company started with many, many years ago. So here you can see in the top right, the kinetic chain data with the hip, forearm, the trunk, and hand speed. And the bottom right has automatic identification again of key events. So we have the takeaway, top, and impact. This is a good example of how the playback speed can be slowed down um, so that it's controlled by the user. You can better use that to facilitate coaching and performance feedback so you can adapt the playback speed as desired. Our last example is a cycling example with the motion monitor bike fit. Um, this system allows for simultaneous full body bilateral collection of the rider and the bike. So this application has icons for program flow. So you see up in the top left, there's icons to activate the hardware, set up the rider and view the data. You can compare left and right side consistency in three perspectives with the data ranges and the max and min values. And then you can toggle through data graphs to see how your adjustments to the bike affect joint angles and orientations. So you can view data such as the left and right hip flexion, abduction, rotation, and then left, right, hip, up, down. You can see we're clicking through the tabs where all your data graphs are stored. And then we have a utilize, you can utilize a 2D trace analysis. So you can compare positional anomalies and stroke consistency from the front side and the top perspectives. And last but not least, you can capture the bike dimensions, such as the frame reach and stack for pre and post fit analysis and include those in the rider's report. So now we're going to have another poll. Um, so this is poll number four. And you can feel free to click multiple choices if you have an interest in multiple sports. I'm interested to see how much cricket we get. All right, we got one cricket or more. <laughs> Great, so it's a pretty even spread of, of variety of sports. Okay, wonderful. So a lot of the concepts that you saw, the um, sports objects could be any um, different object can be tracked and animated. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and pass it back to Mona. She's going to um, share just a few more applications um, and videos. 
All right, thank you, Meredith. Um, so in addition to some of the, with the real time applications for biofeedback, virtual reality and sports, we just wanna share with you some of the other capabilities in the software. So you've seen a little bit about the hybrid motion capture. So hybrid motion capture allows you to combine the strengths of two different kinematic technologies for tracking a subject. So this is an example of using IMUs simultaneously with Vicon cameras. Eye tracking is also being synchronously collected. So the IMUs here are used for tracking the arm and the hand while the remaining body segments are being tracked by markers and Vicon cameras. So this offers full body monitoring along with eye gaze data. And the IMU sensors continue to track the hand when line of sight is an issue. We've also mentioned some about object tracking, visualization and analysis. So here's um, an example of object tracking. Markers are attached to the object, a smartphone here for six off tracking. And then by digitizing landmarks on the object, you can ensure accurate scaling of the object file within the motion monitor. And these digitized landmarks as well as marker positions are tracked and saved so that you can use these for analyzing the position, velocity and acceleration for any point of interest on the object. So now we'll take a look at the activity here. Uh, the linear and angular uh, velocity and acceleration are, um, are displayed and graphed uh, for the track smartphone, and you can view the animation of the smartphone as well. And then particular data was of interest, and thus it was displayed in the animation for easy access. And obviously there's also re reference digital video to confirm tracking accuracy of the object. multi-segmented body. This one is an example of spine detail. So as you saw in an example before, uh, we did hand detail. So the motion monitor also offers multi-segment tracking for foot and spine. And here you can see an example for spine detail whereby multiple vertebrae are instrumented, modeled, tracked, visualized, and analyzed. I think we'll have our final poll for you guys now. All right. I don't know if we're getting a tally on that one. Yeah. Um, oh, oh we, we do. Thanks, Alicia. Thank you. Oh, good. There's a good number of you guys um, looking to do that. Great. Um, okay. Well, appreciate you guys um, taking the time to uh, listen and learn about the motion monitor. I think now we'll open it up for if there were any questions. If you have any questions, you can feel free to share them in the chat.
So there's just a couple that have come in um, via, the, via the chat, not the Q&A. So I'll just ask those first before any more come in. The first question is, uh, different hardware systems capture at different measurement rates. How does uh, the motion monitor align the data streams? So the motion monitor aligns the data in uh, two different ways. Um, we can actively align the data um, if there is a, um, it requires a, a common pulse be entered into all the data streams. Um, and when we're building a system, often we're helping people to configure it appropriately so that they can put a common sync into all data streams if possible. Um, the other option is passive alignment. So motion monitor is always passively aligning the data. Um, and we do that using timestamps, frames, um, a variety of different ways, depending on the hardware system and what capabilities we have, in which case it's passively aligning all the data streams. So you can collect at the full measurement rate um, of the underlying hardware. I assume if anyone's got any follow-up to that, they will ask this in the chat. Yeah. Um, there's a couple <laughs> more here, um, Meredith or Mona. What is the maximum measurement rate you can capture and display data at? Mm. So um, the motion, oh, um, the motion monitor provides the um, we we re, uh, collect the data at the full frame rate of the hardware, so we're not um, undersampling uh, the data as it streams to the motion monitor. It does look like we just had a question pop up from Diana as well. Um, asking if we have solutions to evaluate upper members during gait analysis. Um, and the answer is yes, we do um, allow upper body tracking and analysis during gait. We just had another one pop in on the chat as well. Two questions, I'll ask the first one first. How many marker segments were used to track the spine in the example? That one would just depend on the number of vertebrae you're interested in tracking. So uh, the motion monitor allows you to basically assign a uh, you know, marker cluster um, to particular vertebrae. So you as the user can select um, you know, which segments you actually want to track and analyze. I think in that example, Clark, I think it was the full lower, the full lumbar section. I think we were tracking each vertebrae, I believe, which means there'd be three markers per vertebrae, per vertebrae. or more. Mm -hmm. And the second uh, follow-up question to that is, um, does each skills, golf, baseball, cycling, et cetera, require different add-ons? Uh, no. Um, not necessarily. Um, in many cases, the object tracking, you can use it for a variety of different sports. Um, so you could scale a baseball bat or a golf club with the same capabilities. Um, we do have some predefined analyses that you can choose to add on if you want to use, like the bike fitting, for example, um, is its own kind of standalone uh, application or analysis. But many of them can use the same functionalities without additional costs. That's great. Um, I have one more question uh, that came up to me. What types of calculations can you do within the software and can this data be exported? Um, so there's a variety of different um, analyses that are built in. So you can get all of your raw data. So you can get the raw marker data, the raw sensor, rigid body data. Then you can get your biomechanical analysis. So that would be anything with like your joint angles, energies, power, computations. Those would all come up through drop down menus. Um, and then you can do your own user defined analysis. And so you can take any of those predefined things, give them a name, and then do your own computation off of those. And the types of computations you can do is, is many of the things you could do in like MATLAB. So you have your standard arithmetic, trig functions, integrations, vector math, matrix math. Um, we have multivariate analysis like entropy. Um, so we have some pretty advanced analyses that the user can, can create and we help with our support program as well. We did have uh, one more question that came through the Q&A. Um, it's from Donna, it says, hi, Mona and Meredith and Kim and, and perhaps myself. 
Uh, thank you for the presentation. Is it possible in a hybrid capture example to use markerless cap camera systems? If so, which markerless camera systems? I'm interested in real-time capture. For example, during squat where only the foot and ankle are captured by the Vicon marker system and the rest of the body is markerless. Interested in giving live feedback for symmetry during the task. I think for, um, I mean, we hope to get there. I think right now with, real, uh, with the markerless, um, the idea of doing real time, I don't think we're there yet. It still requires a step of um, a post-processing step for you know processing the video files. Um, but um, I, I don't think we're far from that, but I think we still have that one step. Um, we're getting faster, so it's not real time, right? Uh, as far as feedback, like the way we're showing in the biofeedback uh, demonstrations, but um, it's hopefully getting faster and hopefully soon we'll be at real time someday. So I think you can collect it simultaneously, but it won't, you won't have it available for real time. That kind of uh, leads into a question that I got uh, come through about latency. So uh, as you guys kind of obviously rely a lot on uh, real-time applications, what kind of latency can customers expect? So we spend a lot of our time minimizing <laughs> um, and really optimizing. Um, so that's a lot of why we kind of design our own um, computer systems often and provide the computer in a turnkey solution um, because we spend a lot of time kind of making sure all the underlying pieces are, are set up to minimize any latency. The motion monitor itself doesn't introduce uh, latency. We're collecting at the real time um, stream by integrating the various SDKs from the manufacturers. So um, what we're really dependent on is, is how the, the marker data, for example, is streaming out um, in terms of the speed and, and optimizing it. But we have many people that use motion monitor in a real-time mode. So they're using it in a um, interactive live sense with virtual reality. Um, and so they're, they're experiencing it at realistic real-time um, speeds. And I think a lot of the latency, I know we've tried to objectively capture it, but that's also sometimes difficult to do. Um, you know, we've tried to test it. Uh, when we can, but a lot of there's a lot of factors I think that do, you know, uh, play a role in that. Depending on even the hardware system itself, if the hardware system has any inherent latencies with outputting data, to even you know the how complex a computation may be. Um, but I think for the most most of our clients who are doing any of the real time biofeedback or virtual reality, um, at least it's. It's one of those things, like this. it's not obvious to the human eye with the latency that's there, so they can still conduct their real-time or virtual reality applications. Yeah. Great, so uh, we had another uh, question come through from Donna again. Uh, um, how long does it take to run the current reports that are automated? For example, the golf and baseball pitching reports. Couple um, minutes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, not yeah. even. Yeah, I would say it's probably in the order of like um, two minute to two minutes, depending to push out data. Um, the icon interface of XGen makes a huge difference. Um, so we have icons that are predefined to send out data and automatically launch a report. Um, we also have uh, integrations with athlete management systems with like Smartabase and Conduct that automatically push data um, in a very seamless and fast fashion. And that's actually a good segue into one of the other questions that I got um, that has to do with uh, marker cleanup and editing capabilities within Motion Monitor. Um, and also if the Motion Monitor has filtering. So uh, again, I guess if any of that kind of factors into how long it uh, takes to produce a report. Yeah, we have. Um built-in marker editing capabilities. Um, we do spend a lot of time trying to optimize the real-time setup so that people don't have to do marker cleanup. Um, a lot of that comes um, with how you collect your data and having the flexibility for the biomechanical model. So um, we spend a lot of time trying to optimize camera placement and marker placement so that they, they don't have to do cleanup. Um, but we don't live in a perfect world. So um, when you do need to, to do that, we have the ability to um, handle marker swapping, um, interpolate data, um, 
to um, kind of clip um, data so that you can handle marker jumping and things like that. Um, those are all built-in features. And then we also have all the filtering um, integrated. So we have high and low pass notch filters, um, Butterworth and Chevy Chev filtering options that you can turn on uniquely for any of your hardware systems. Awesome. I just have one last question. Um, can I define my data analysis later or do I need to define the variables of interest at the time of collection? You can always come back to your activity um, later to look at different analyses. So you don't have to, they don't have to be kind of pre-programmed before data collection. So as long as we, because we collect the raw data, you can always come back and look at different parameters or enter, you know, other user-defined, create other user-defined variables as well. We had one come through the Q&A. Did you validate the systems in neurological disease? That would probably come back to more of our, our users um, and how they're utilizing the various systems. Um, we don't um, do that validation in-house. It's more the underlying hardware and um, applying the biomechanical model. We've had clients use the system around the world for a variety of different neurological conditions um, and publish data for those. I don't know if you have anything to add, Mona. No, I mean, I think, you know, like Mary was saying, because there's different technologies that are supported, um, depending on the application requirements, um, you know, many times we have, you know, depending on the application, someone has a requirement for the measurement rate or resolution and accuracy of a system. Um, so a lot of those things just determine which one is being used for a particular application. Awesome. Well, I think that seems to be all of the questions that we have. Um, I want to thank you both, Mona and Meredith, for a great presentation. Um, and I encourage everyone, honestly, to, to go check it out. You've got the, um, the details for contacting the support uh, down below, as well as their website. Um, and hopefully, you know, when we come to a time when we can start doing conferences, etc., uh, I encourage, you know, everyone to, to go check them out because, you know, they're doing some great, great things. Um, you also have my contact details as well as Kim's. Um, and then, yeah, again, if you guys have any questions, don't, uh, don't hesitate to contact either of us. Thanks, Thank Felix. Thanks, Vicon. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for attending.